What's going on everybody? Triple Crown 24 back today with a card show recap. I'm going to be talking about the Detroit slash Troy card show from this past weekend. It's actually Saturday night when I'm recording this, but I don't have a lot of time on Sunday and Monday to be able to go out and make a video and get all my errands done. So I'm doing one tonight uh, to kind of talk about the first two days and show you what I picked up because I don't imagine I'll be doing too much buying on Sunday. I, I sure hope because I did a lot. Uh, the past couple of days, and you'll see what I picked up. Very happy. There's one pretty big time card at the end, so stay tuned. Um, but kind of get go through this a little quicker. If uh, any of you guys want to talk in the comments a little bit more, because the first few times I did this video, it took about 20 minutes to do, and that's a little bit too long for one of these types of videos. But if you want to ask any questions about why I picked up certain things in like more detail in the comments, I'd be happy to write you a little novel down there to tell you a little bit more about my thought process. But let me show you some PC stuff to kick things off. Can't go wrong with this. Topps uh, Gold Miggy, number to 2005 for a buck. Couldn't go wrong there. Same with this one here. I've been after this for a while. It's the SP from last year's gallery. One dollar. Also got some ballpark collection here. Base. Beautiful blue refractor for under sticker price, thankfully. Um, these are not numbered, but I love blue refractors from Tops Chrome. These two as well, two Tops Nows. Always looking to add the Tops Nows in at reasonable prices because some of them on eBay are definitely not in the reasonable price category. Uh, some stuff for the Tigers team set. We've got a Bob Swift 52, inching a little bit closer to that. And this will be a big inch closer. It's the 57 Tops Al K line. One of the two K lines I still needed. So. Very stoked about that. About 15 to 16 more cards to go overall there. And then I kind of bundled this last Miggy. I have it here in the plastic because I'm trying to prevent or uh, prevent scratching on the magnetic before I get home and get it in the sleeve. But this is number 250, Autofax, autograph number 47 in my Miggy collection, which was nice. Anytime I'm going to buy a Miggy that's at a bit of a premium, um, which is the case most of the time at Michigan shows because he's the popular player from the Tigers. So you're going to pay a little bit more. That's one of the downsides. That's that you could find him all over the place, but you will pay more to get his cards. It's nice though when you can pick something else out to go with it, which is what I did. So this first little stack of stuff I bought for resale is kind of stuff that I'm holding, which is a little bit different than normal. Most of the time you guys see me pick up stuff and move it right away. I'll tell you about some stuff that falls into that category here in a minute. But I was really focusing because I have a lot of show inventory at the moment. I'm trying to get some more pieces that I can hold a little bit longer and I don't have to put them out in the showcase right away. Now I have a lot of shows building up throughout the rest of the year. It's going to present a little bit of a challenge, but I'm up for the challenge. Um, but I need to make sure that I start doing this because this is how I can achieve long-term success and uh, make some of these flips a little bit better. So Senzel update image variation kind of goes into the category of some of these here. A couple of autos on some guys who I think are undervalued right now. Kopec Real One, which was recommendation in one of Filmington's most recent videos. And then Ozzy Albies. Indigo Auto to 150 from Gypsy Queen two years ago. This is nice. Very nice card here. And I think it's really undergraded. It's kind of harsh. There's a white spot on that corner up there, which you can probably see on camera. Dealing with hotel lighting, so it's not the best uh, image quality today, but it's graded an 8. That's really the only issue I see with the card, and I looked it over pretty thoroughly at the hotel here and at the show it's pretty crazy this card actually had a sticker on it for 20 and i got it for half that shows you how much it's kind of declined this was really popular when it first came out uh the gold if you listen to those back pages i'll tell you that you cannot um, underestimate the value of the tops golds 
And I think if Correa does bounce back and starts to play to the level that people used to expect from him and how hot he was when he came out in 2015, this would be a solid card. I don't know if I'll crack it yet and resubmit it. It's kind of up in the air. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Like I said, the only issue I really see is that corner up there, and I just I think it's undergraded. I think that it could get a 9. Um, I don't normally do that where I crack out graded cards to get them re-slabbed, but I might make the exception in this case because I think an 8 will scare a lot of people off, but to me it doesn't scare me off because it's still that corner doesn't take away from the card. Um, it's a little bit off-centered left to right, but it's not too bad. It's not as bad as some of the ones I've seen in Room 2015. Uh, so the category of all those is just players who didn't perform last year to the expectations that a lot of people had for them. So I'm just going to stash these for now. Uh, they're guys who I really would expect to rebound in 2020 for multitude of reasons. It can be injury, it can be being overshadowed by teammates, it could be trying to learn a new position. All of those apply to these guys right here. So kind of holding off on them for now. Uh, yeah, so I didn't really buy anything that's going to be put in the showcase right away, except for these two is probably what's going to happen. Um, Rendon, Chrome, and Tops Update Base. I don't think they are PSA 10s, so I'm not going to submit them to grade them. I'm kind of being kind of strict with my submissions for grading. There's nothing wrong with 9s. Uh, just right now, it's in my best interest to keep them raw and move them to someone who kind of wants to buy them in bulk. So I got a good deal on these two together. I also got a Chrome Update Refractor for a really good price. It was 4 bucks at LCS, so I'll probably just try to bundle them together, make a few bucks on it, move forward. Um, I bought them thinking that maybe I could grade them, but upon closer look, probably not. That's what happens sometimes. I did get some slab candidates though, and I bought semi-rigids because it's about time to submit some more stuff for grading. So I have one submission out now, probably will work on another one soon. So you can see here, top sticker, which means I cracked out a redemption. If you're wondering what it was, here it is right here. I believe this is the finest mystery based on the card number on the back. It's also serial numbered at the top to 99 with this weird serial number, which is what I think they do with the mystery ones. So this is Senzel base, a little refractor shine on it. Really nice on-card autograph. Finest doesn't typically hold value as much as some of the like Topps Chrome kind of stuff. It's a brand that has continuity though, so I do believe Finest has more room for growth, especially since they're becoming more and more on-card autographs. There used to be like patch autos with stickers and stuff that kind of turned some people away, but Finest is still a product that I think has a lot of potential to it. There are people who do seek out Finest cards and in Cincinnati market, I think this will be a good card for me, especially once I get it graded. I was very happy with the price I got of that. Same with this one right here, Eloy Jimenez. This is the Chrome, number to 999. It's actually 99 of 999, so I'm sure that is some kind of eBay one of one. Um, I, don't, I don't really know how, but it's got to be. <laughs> so this is a really nice card. Uh, these are, I won't say that they're easy to grade. There's no cards that are like super easy to grade, in my opinion. Uh, but they're a little bit nicer than some of the paper heritage cards in my experience looking at them so this was one that I bundled with the Albies I was pretty happy with it. Eloy's a guy who I think is just he gets enough hobby love but it's not as much as I think it should be it's an ample amount based on how he produced last year but I think once he plays a full season in a team that is actually competitive which the White Sox are they could be as soon as next year. I really do think that they could make a huge jump if their offseason goes smoothly. We'll see. I think if that happens, and this and a lot of the Eloy stuff is going to bump up. This one is not going to be a hold for too long uh, because I want to cash in on his success right now. But this is a Lamar Jackson, what I will affectionately nickname the Barbershop card. 
it is a little bit off-centered. Um, that's a common thing with that year's Prism 2018. What I will say though is that when I buy these cards and look to get them graded, I look for a 9 or better. I think if you go looking for 10s on a lot of stuff, you're going to come up disappointed quite often. You don't want to put yourself in a position where you overpay for something where it's got to be a 10 or it's a bust for you if you're someone who's just looking for resale. If you're looking to just get one for your collection, you want to get it slabbed and you are okay with getting a 9, which 9s are fine, I say go for it. But if you're doing what I'm doing, it might be better to take that approach. So this was someone who actually approached me with some stuff. There's two cards I was really interested in. Just settled on this one. So there you go. Feature PSA submission building there. The Lamar is probably going to be a separate submission and I'm probably going to submit it alongside this. Cannot tell you guys how stoked I am. You don't know what it is. It is the LeBron James 2003-2004 Tops rookie card. Here's the back. I actually got to keep the box. One sec, let me show you. There it is. So I get that as a little memento to go along with it. Um, yeah, I pulled this from a pack. I opened up some packs because they had told me um, the people at the table had told me that all the other like major names from this class, which there's no one as major as King James, but they had come out. So like Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony had all come out of the box, but no LeBron. So I decided to take a little chance at it and it paid off. What do I think it will grade? It's a toss up. Maybe a 10. Probably a nine. Um, I've been telling people a ten, but I really, really took a look at it today. Um, again, I use like one of those little glass things where you see through it to look through. Yesterday, I did it again today. Maybe it's because I wasn't as in good as good of a mood today. Um, but there's a little bit of edge wear down here at the bottom. I don't know if it's enough to knock it uh, down, but there's also uh, it's just a little bit off centered to top to bottom. This might be something that I do a BGS submission on, might do PSA, not 100% sure which route I'm going to go yet. So with the information I told you guys, obviously I can't show you it up front. I don't think there's any issues with corners or surface to tell you. Um, let me know which route you would go. Would you go with BGS or would you go with PSA? I don't really have a preference at this point, but I'm, if you were to ask me to do it right now, I'd probably go with PSA. But Super stoked. This is the biggest card that I have ever pulled directly. I've had cards pulled for me and breaks, that kind of stuff, um, that were a little bit more pricey, but this is one that's not going anywhere for a while. I'm sitting on this thing until he, I don't know, whatever else there is for, for him to do in his career. Hall of Fame, something like that. Um, but yeah, this is not going anywhere for a while. Super stoked to have pulled it. Made the trip with this one card right here. Wish I could have had a clip of it. I don't, but yeah. Speechless still. Stunned. So that will do it today. Uh, let me know what you think about the LeBron down below. And of course, if you want to talk about any of the cards that I picked up, like any of these, and what I think about these players, feel free to drop me a comment. Be happy to talk more about it. Uh, down there, but trying to keep this video under 15 minutes, which hey, I did it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be sure to see you next time. Until then, have a good one.